Hello, my name is John Ryuta, and I'm the Product Development Manager at Celestron for binoculars, spotting scopes, microscopes, and Elements Outdoor Electronics. We've been receiving a number of questions recently regarding binoculars, specifically the difference between poroprism binoculars and roofprism binoculars. These are probably terms that you've heard, but maybe you didn't quite understand what they were meaning. Let's start with poroprism binoculars. In fact, let's start with the question of what is a poroprism? Binoculars all use prisms. The prisms are mounted inside the shoulder piece of the binocular. If they didn't, a binocular would probably be much longer than it actually is. Galilean binoculars, which are a very simple binocular design, which is simply a sequence of lenses, one after the other, and then joined together with a hinge, require distance and size in order to make their magnification greater. With the use of prisms, you can actually make a stronger optical system fit inside of a smaller space. But back to the idea of a poro prism. What does poro mean? Well, it's actually someone's name. It's the name of the person who invented it, a fellow named Ignazio Poro. Ignazio Poro was in the military, and he was developing surveying equipment. And he was discovering that you could make instruments much smaller and therefore easier to carry if you combined the lens system along with a prism system so that the light didn't have to always travel in a straight line from the objective to the eyepiece, that you could actually bend it around so that it could fit into a smaller space. The prisms that Ignazio Poro designed were triangular. You've probably seen something very similar in a science class when you were young. If you shine a light through one side, it comes out as a rainbow the other side. Ignazio came to the idea that if you took two triangular prisms and you place them facing together at the hypotenuse, yes, I know, it's geometry, I'm sorry, but it has to be done. If you take them facing together at the hypotenuse so that the ends touch, you actually can pass the light through a series of bends to fit inside an optic, thereby giving you a higher magnification in a smaller space. The fact of the matter, though, is that when you take triangular prisms and fit them like that, the eyepiece and the objective are not going to be in line. And that's perfectly all right, because the image isn't changed as it goes through. The beauty of these binoculars is that Ignazio's design allows for the objective lenses to be more widely spaced than the eyepiece lenses. Now, yes, there are modern variations where the objective lens is closer than the eyepiece lens. Those are generally compacts, and we can take those up at another time. But back to these traditional models. When you look through a poroprism binocular, you're actually getting the benefit of those prisms spacing out the objective lenses because by having the objective lenses more widely spaced, instead of approaching both eyepiece images from a straight line, you're actually triangulating. And by triangulating, you're seeing the object in the distance at magnification from two slightly different angles at the same time. This gives you a three-dimensional effect gives you a more realistic view of the world. And quite frankly, I'm rather fond of it. I happen to be quite an admirer of poroprism binoculars. Now, this is our traditional Celestron Ultima poroprism binocular. Classic field glass. This one happens to be an 8x42. You can also use poroprism binoculars in much larger optics, and that's where they particularly come into their strengths. For instance, this is a Celestron Skymaster Pro 15 by 70. You'll notice that it also has this traditional shoulder shape and the objective is at a wider space than the eyepiece is. Now, this is 15 magnification. What you're going to be looking at with this are primarily astronomical objects or objects that are very far away. If this didn't have a prism system in it, this optic would have to probably be meters long in order to get the same level of magnification and optical performance. But because of Ignazio's poro prisms, 
you can combine it and compact it down so that it's actually able to be held in your hands or most commonly people will mount these on a tripod. But what about roof prisms? What are roof prisms? Well, many people long using the traditional Poro prism binocular said, we really like that Poro design, but I wonder if it could just be made even smaller. Well, it could. This is a Trail Seeker ED roof prism binocular. Now you'll notice, it has a different shape than the Ultima Poro binocular. It's straight from the eyepiece to the objective lens. Does that mean that it doesn't have any prisms in it? Not at all. It has prisms, but instead of Poro prisms, it has a roof prism assembly. Now, I say roof prism assembly, because in the roof prism design, there are actually two different shapes of prisms. It's a much more complicated prism design. It's most important that we show a diagram at this point. The roof prism design uses a roof prism shaped like, you might have guessed, the roof of a house. It also uses an auxiliary prism. And between those two, they bend the light in a variety of shapes that allow it to transit the entire optical system in a straight line so that the light entering from the objective is on the same plane as coming out the eyepiece. That allows you to have a binocular that's trim and sleek. The challenge with these was when they were originally invented, 100 or so years ago, the design was so complex that it made it difficult to produce reliably. And so for many years, roof prism binoculars were actually thought to be not quite as good as the traditional Poros. Roof prism binoculars benefited greatly from the discovery of a process called phase coating. Now, phase coating is a subject all to itself, but just briefly, phase coating keeps the light rays in phase as they transit the prisms. Now, what is in phase? Well, all of the visible light that we see is broken up into different wavelengths. So you have red, orange, yellow, green, etc. You remember this from high school physics, I'm sure. Keeping that in phase is important because as the wavelengths transit glass and bend, they can start to come away from each other. Also, the roof prism design has one particular angle that the light must actually nearly cross another light path traveling through the prism at the same time. If those two hit instead of just miss each other, the effect is much like if you took a garden hose and another garden hose and you sprayed them together, poosh. That would also happen with the light. You don't want that to happen. So phase coating is used on the prisms to prevent that from happening, keeping all the light waves in phase. Now, which one's better, the roof prism or the poro prism? Well, that's really a matter of choice. Today, most of the high-end optics are using roof prisms. And that's great because people like the shape. They want the ability to have this very trim, sleek, modern shape. However, there are many of us, and I said us because I'm included in those, who generally enjoy the Poro prism, not only because it has a natural wide grip feel, but also because it has that wide spacing of the objectives to give a triangulated appearance and three-dimensional look at the world around us. But in the end, Roof, Poro, find the one that you particularly like and use that. There is no wrong answer. There's only really what fits you best. I hope I've answered some of the questions you may have had about Poro and Roof Prism binoculars. If you have other questions, please send them to Dear Celestron. For Celestron, I'm John Riuta. Good observing.